Hi great people, welcome once again, it's your favorite girl, Princess Gleason, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> okay, so I have a new hairdo, I actually did it myself, it's still like all toppy toppy toppy, it has to be like laid down and laid back, but well, I, I'm just done doing it, so this is my new hairdo, hope uh, it works. My my mom and our parents used to do this on our hair sometimes when we were younger so that it should grow faster and easier. So that's exactly what I did as well. Welcome Sir Herman Carl. Thank you for coming. It's a card, a chapter a day. My crown is not sitting well on my hair. <laughs> it's a chapter a day to keep us going to get us soaked with the word so our lives can be transformed. Happy Sunday to you all who are connected five on five. And we have to check out the birthday people. There is a brother par excellence, a big brother, a friend. Well, I don't know how to describe him. His birthday is today. I'm really, really excited. I'm sure he should be wondering by now why I've not sent him a birthday message yet. But I have a surprise for him. So <laughs> I have about five people today who have their birthdays today. So let's say happy birthday to Cham Adeson Defru. And to Evan, to Anyazama Das Kills, to Kumi Kumi, and to Mam Mangui Bether. To these five people, I say happy birthday and I say God bless you. May He transform you. May He grant you your heart desires, the inner, inner heart desires, and your heart cries that you have that you've not been able to get answers to. May He answer this this season for you and may he open windows of heaven and pour out his blessings beyond all reasonable doubts upon your life and may he show you what you can even think ask or imagine welcome selonji thank you for coming always for always being part you're very welcome sir harman okay the dogs also want to be a part of the entire show today okay so what we always do is when we're done saying happy birthday to the birthday people if i don't have your birthday written down you please have to send it to my inbox so i should write it down so i won't forget to wish you a happy birthday when it's your day are these dogs for real they want to be a part of this live stream i can't blame them sometime you know <laughs> after we're done saying happy birthday we we'll definitely have to say Happy New Year. This is the last day of January. And this brother par excellence is Sir Cham Defrade. So he has been an amazing friend, an amazing big brother. And I just pray that God will really, really, really bless him. Like bless him, like seriously bless him. That's one of the birthday persons today. And so Happy New Year to you all. I'm sure you're having a great time. Today's Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. And uh, I'm sure you had a great time in church if you've already been to church. I'm sure you're preparing right if you're just waking up because some people are kind of just waking up right now. It's morning for them. And you would get definitely prepare right to go to church because it's important. I know in some places you wouldn't have to go physically to church but you would have to look, do online church. Yeah, you have to watch service online. I do that almost all the time. It's like a normal thing for me because there are barely churches here. And even if they are, I can't understand Thai language. So I won't be able to attend church service. But sometimes when I'm in a different province, I can actually attend church because they have African churches, you know, like Africans who can speak English and we attend church services there, but for the most part, I always attend service online, which is fair enough because I can dance to a lot of African music, which I love too, so that works. And today we are reading Matthew chapter three, Mac chapter three, God help me. Why am I so drawn to Matthew? Today we're reading Mark chapter 3. It's a card, a chapter a day to boost your faith, to get you grow, to get you stand the test of time, to get you to be able to leave here on planet Earth because it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Nobody says the road is going to be easy, but God can bring you this far to leave you. That you should remember. It's true. When he starts a work in your life, he takes it to the end. So this is me talking so much because I want the dogs to get off my live stream. Yep. 
I don't want to start reading the chapter and then the dogs are the one doing the talk on the background. <laughs> I don't want them to stop my shine. No, they can't steal my shine. <laughs> so let's go. We normally just have to talk a little bit at the start and then when we're done reading the chapter, we can now say the lessons we learned. We can talk a little bit more at the end and then on all the social media platforms, you're going to get just the edited part. So if I'm saying Mark chapter 3, you're going to listen from there. Mark chapter 3 till the last verse. Mark chapter 3 has 35 chapters. That's not so long. So we're not going to have a very long time to read. But we're going to have enough time to talk. Because when we have short chapters, we'll definitely have enough time to talk. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do, 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 do this. Mark chapter 3 and he entered again into the synagogue and there was a man there with a withered hand and they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him and he said unto the man which had the withered hand stand forth and he said unto them is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil to save a life or to kill but they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Edomia, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, and they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples, that a small ship wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. An unclean spirit, and an unclean spirit, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into the mountain, and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve. Okay. For real? Let's give it some time. Just a couple of minutes, and we're going to get back to it. And unclean spirits, and they saw him fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain and called unto him who he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon, he surname Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Balneges, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphus, and Thaddeus, and Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into an house, and the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He had Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devil casted he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, divided, he cannot stand but had an end. 
No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because they said, He had an unclean spirit, they came then, his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother, or my brethren? And he looked round about on them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. That was Mark chapter 3. That was a short read. The dogs had to take a part of it. They wanted to also get in and they got in. Welcome, Mam Relin this loom. Hello, hello. Welcome, Semre Prosper Bean. Thank you for coming in. It's a chapter a day to keep us going. And today we're reading Mark chapter 3. Okay, so we're done with the reading. It's now time to talk. Do you have something to tell someone on Sunday? It might not be from Mark chapter 3, but it might be a word that can bless someone and make their lives better. It could just be a quote you read from somewhere. It could be a story you read from somewhere. You can write it on Facebook. You can write it on a chat. You can write it to my inbox a day before or hours before we get here. And I'll definitely read it out so people can be blessed. You know, that's what this is all about. So let's go. Let's see. The first part, it's like we always have to get these people. And like we said, hi, Sarah Jean. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here today. You've always been here and you've missed out for a couple of days. But we're glad to have you today. Hope you're doing great. Thank you for coming. So like it looks like every verse we start in Mac, we need to find out those people that are always going to be in your life, that are just in your life to look for the mistakes you make or to look for things to trap you. We need to get that straight. We all have those people in our lives. We have those people that are like monitoring spirits. They just walk around you. They really have nothing good planned for you. Everything they have planned is evil. They just want to see you fail. They just want to see you fall. They just want to see you get into their traps that they set. But unfortunately, they never ever got Jesus. So rest assured, those people are around your life. Look keenly, you're going to see them and know how to treat them. Jesus used to pepper them so well. I enjoy how he deals with them. <laughs> and sometimes he just saves himself the stress and just remains silent. You know, so silent is key sometimes. Okay, and so this is Jesus. He is gone and he's about to do good. And he knows that these people have it in their hearts that if he does good on a Sabbath day, it's going to if he does the healing on the Sabbath day, they're going to say it's working on the Sabbath day. So he asked them a question, a very tricky question, and nobody could answer. You know how sometimes you want to do something good, but you're worried about the people who are around you. Like if I do this thing, will people not say I'm showing off? Will people not say this or that? No, you're not supposed to bother about what those people would think because they would think regardless. If you do it, they'll still think something. If you don't do it, they'll still think something. I, I know a number of times that I've done something good for someone and they took it for bad. So it happens. So Jesus was not about wasting his time here. He just asked them that question to put them on a hot seat because he knew what they were thinking. Go ahead and do good. If it's good, go ahead and do good. Let nothing, let, let the thoughts of people not make you stop doing good. Let the thoughts of people not make you stop doing what God wants you to do. You have to do it. When you know it's right and it's the right thing to be done, go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter who thinks what. People would think. Yes, this one is doing this because he just wants to show off. Yes, this one is doing this because he just wants to gain popularity. That one is doing that because she just wants people to see her, people to notice her. Yes, that's why she's coming life every single day. Like, who does that? Like, do I care? 
If I know what God wants me to do and I'm loving it and I'm doing it, I don't care what people say. It doesn't matter. What should matter to you is what God thinks about it and what God says about it. And if God says it's good, then you are good to go. It doesn't matter what people think. Just do it. And that's how Jesus went ahead and healed the man. Because when he asked them the question, they could not answer because they knew he was right. They knew he was right. So all those things they had at the back of their mind were wrong. And some of those people that are going to be saying those things about you, they know that you're doing the right thing. They know you're doing good. And they know that it's important for you to do good. But just because maybe they can't do it. And so you're seemingly in the spotlight always. It just gets them irritated. And truth is, some people just not like you. Whether you're doing good or you're not doing good, some people just not like you. Even if you do the best of your abilities that you can, even if you have to cut your hand, you have to lose a hand to do good, some people will still just not like you. I heard something somewhere that we're created in cliques, like we have our cliques. They're just some people that you see you click with. You don't hate them. They're just some people you see you click with. And there's some people you see you don't just click with them. It's not like they've done anything bad or something or they're not nice people. No, but you just don't click. I, that happens to me too. So I'm not saying like I'm different. It happens to me too. I'm a very um, outgoing person. I'm an extrovert. So it's easy for me to relate to people. But believe you me, in that easygoing way of relating with people, there's some people that I just don't click. Like we, we don't connect. I don't know how to explain it, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. So they're just going to be those people like that. There are some people that are just not going to click with you. And so they're just not going to want to see you prosper. They're not just going to want to see you progress and all that. But don't freak out. Just keep doing you and do good. That's what God wants. Hi, teacher Kani Khan. Welcome to my live stream. <laughs> That's my pretty teacher. She's my colleague and uh, we work together. So she just popped up in my live stream. Okay. And uh, people don't like you for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, Mom Relinda. There's some people that just don't like you for no reason. It's not something you've done or not done. They just don't like you. And we kind of have those kind of people in our lives as well. I, 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 don't, I don't say... We should hate people, but there's some people you just don't click with. Like you can't flow, you can't connect with. Sometimes some people, I kind of connect with them, but their conversation, it just push, pushes me away. It just gets me away from them. We click from the start, but their conversation is not in line with my values and my principles. So I can't continue. Like it just pushes me away. But there are some people that we just don't even have that first connection, like that first click. I, I don't know if that happens to other people as well, but it happens to me. But the people we're talking about here is these people who are really sitting and planning evil about you. They just want you to fail. They just want you to, to falter, to make mistakes. They just want you to be doing the wrong things. You know, it seems like they are actually praying for it. I there's a scripture that says the people were praying that Peter should fail. Like they fasted and prayed. They were fasting and praying for Peter to be dealt with. You can imagine what that means. Okay, Saul, sorry, Saul turned Paul. They were praying. They were praying and fasting for him to get into trouble. Can you imagine that? So it happens. Those people on earth, they are people like that who are against you. And that's what they're doing. Okay. So um, when Jesus noticed that this is something that is really almost really, really difficult in these days because the um, social media and everything is in our faces. Someone is going to say something like, oh, in Jesus's day, there was no Internet. There was no this. But they had their things. They had their things that was taking their attention as well. They had things in those days that was taking their attention. And Jesus noticed that. The crowd was coming too much on him. There were there were so there was so much on him. Like every time they were just around him because they were hearing about the good things he was doing. When you're doing good and you're doing right, it's going to sell itself. Like people are just going to know about it, and people want to get to know you. People want to get to connect with you because who doesn't like somebody who does good? Everybody likes good people around them. Nobody likes bad people around them. 
Even bad people don't want bad people around themselves. They want good people. <laughs> they just don't know that you create your environment. If you're a bad person, bad people are going to be attracted to you. If you're a good person, good people are going to be attracted to you. And a little bit of the bad people are going to be attracted to you too. Some people are just supposed to be in your life for a short time. True, my Merlindas. And... There's something T.D. Jake said that some people come to your life for a reason and a season. Some people come to your life for a reason and forever. Some people come to your life for a season and for no reason at all. <laughs> you need to get it to know the difference. And you can only know the difference if you're connected to God. So he gives you the spirit of discernment. And the difficult part is letting go. Because there are some people who came to your life for a reason and a season and that reason is so important that it gets difficult for you to let go of the people when it's time to let go I've been in that that position I cried my heart out I tried to fix things I tried to mend things they were not mendable the person's work in my life was done and dusted and we had to make that break away. We, we're not angry at each other. We're not fighting. We actually fought before, but we're not fighting when we're just separated. It, it's like I was just, I'm the friends person. When I make friend, when I have friends, I just don't want to let them go. I just, so I take my time to build friendship. And so when it has to go away, when it's that person's season to go, the reason for being in my life is done, so they have to go. It's hard. It is hard. That was one of the hardest seasons of my life. That was 20, it was 2020, 2019, there about. Like, we're just getting into 2020. That was one of the hardest seasons of my life. Not basically, but that year. It was so hard. I had to let go of the friendship that had lasted, like... That was like my body, body, body. It was hard, but I just knew it came to my mind again. Cleeton, you always talk about it. You always say you there will be a point like that in your life and all, which is true. I'm sure I saw that message for that point in my life. And when it came back to me, I was like, oh, yeah, it's clear now. I see where this was coming from. Like there are times that you have to let go. So Jesus saw how these people were just on him and on him and on him. And he knew he needed time. He needed a personal time. He needed a personal time for himself. And he just, he just had to go. He, he just had to get away. He had to move away from the multitude. We need the quiet time. There are some times that you need to just shut your phone down. Like just turn it off. And have a quiet time there was a time I had to do like this whole thing I, I I used to call it my friends always laugh when I say Facebook sabbatical it's Facebook sabbatical they're just gonna burst into laughter like I wake up my hands are shaking it's like if I don't turn on my Facebook I'm gonna be in trouble like but I know I need the time out I need the time out I need to get some personal time with God personal time with myself you know, I need to get some time with myself, do an intro introspect, you know, look within and ask, like meditate and all that. There are times that we all need those times in our lives. But in this generation, it's not easy. Everything is seemingly so fast now, 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 now. So it feels like the, the, the few minutes you're just going to get off Facebook or social media or something like you're going to miss every single thing. No, it's not true. It's not true. So we need to know there are people, we are not going to save the world. Jesus already saved the world. You can't save the world. Jesus saved the world already. So you need that time out. If Jesus himself here needed a time out, when the multitude was pressing on him and pressing on him, he realized that he needed time out and he had to move away from them. You have to move away from it. Sometimes we have to move away from the spotlight. We, we, we get so caught up in the spotlight thing that we can't move away. We have to move away from the spotlight and let God do what he has to do with us and through us. So Jesus had to move away from the disciples. And just like I said, we have to remember T.D. Jake said, there are some people that come to your life for a reason and a season. Those people, letting them go, it's not easy. 
I've had my moments. I cried my heads out. And there are some people that come to your life for a reason and forever. There are some people that come to your life for no reason at all. And it's just going to be there. Some can be there for a season too. Some can be there for forever. If someone comes to your life and it's not adding value, of course, letting them go is an easy thing. <laughs> But if someone came to your life and added value, letting them go, I tell you the truth, it's not easy. It can never be easy. But with God, if you trust God and, and you ask him questions like, Lord, is it that time? Is it that season? Is this supposed to be the end of it? Is the person done with the work that they were supposed to do in my life? Or am I done with the work that I was supposed to do in this person's life? If that's what, is that why I'm supposed to, we're supposed to get off each other? Is that the reason? When you ask God those kinds of questions, those kinds of deep questions and you wait for an answer, you would get him. He will tell you if that's the season. Okay. And then um, Jesus went on and he was putting them now in groups. Yeah. Time out is very, very important. Ma'am Relinda's is very, very important. But in this uh, rush, rush our generation, we hardly get time out. <laughs> Either you're going to work, you're coming back, you have to take care of the kids, you have to do this. You, you, I duck my hat for people who are married and have kids because their own work is just like they have like three lives. They have to take care of themselves, they have to take care of kids, they have to take care of their husband. They have themselves, they have to take care of their wives, they have to take care of kids. Like I really duck my hat for them and it just amazes me when a lot of young people are struggling to run it, rush into it with the wrong mentalities, with the wrong ideologies. And that's why a lot of divorce in our generation, because rush out, rush in, rush out, rush in, rush out. You don't even have an idea. You don't even have a clue what it's all about. And believe you me, when I was younger, I just knew marriage was, oh, when you're married, you can do the things you want your way, the way you want it, the way you like it. You're forgetting that your husband is a unique human being as well. So he also has his own things he likes and the way he likes it. So it's not just like you're leaving your house because in the house it feels like, oh, mom always wants me to do this thing her way. Daddy always wants me to do this thing his way. Blah, 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 blah. My sisters, my brothers, my this. So when I get to my house, I'll be doing my things the way I like it. Huh. Ah, baby girl, young man, you're in for a shock. And it is that person also has what they like the way they like it and how they like it that's where it has to come with compromise and a lot of young people in our generation we don't like compromise we, we just like our way unfortunately it's never gonna be our way it's not just our way People, a lot of people don't know that it's sacrifices. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. So they're just going with what I have to get, what I have to gain, what is going to happen to me, me, myself, and I. And then they get in and they see that it's not about just them. And they can't stand it, so they run out. There are some days I can't handle myself by myself. Imagine handling a second person. So I have to be in the good frame of mind to know that, yes, getting into this it's about a different person with different values with different rules and regulations with different upbringing different environmental changes all those things affect the way people think people see life people perceive life but the most important part is if you love God and you know God then we can work together that's where it starts that's the foundation the foundation of it because when we love God our values will definitely blend so that's where it starts but sometimes we young people say, well, I'll change him. I'll change her. When we get into the relationship, no. Marriage magnifies attitudes. It doesn't change it. It magnifies it. So if you're seeing something in the relationship that you don't like and you can't handle and you can't tolerate, don't get in. Don't get in. Why am I even talking about marriage? As the spirit leads, that's what we promised we're going to be doing on a chapter a day. So Jesus needed time out. If Jesus needed time out, we all as human beings, we need time out. Let's, let's get off the so much noise, the so much news, the so much whatever. We need to get time out, you know, for ourselves and for God. 
And so he had to move away from the crowd as much as the crowd needed him because people were coming for different reasons. Some people wanted to be healed. Some people just wanted to touch him because they knew if they touch him, they'll be healed. Some people just wanted to be around him. Some people just wanted to listen to the truth that he carried. When you carry truth, people are going to rush you. And then they rush us. When you carry the truth, the, then they rush you. <laughs> like that so Jesus knew that the people needed the truth and the people really really needed him but he needed time out and because he was taking time out didn't mean the people were going to die but sometimes we feel like we just have to carry the world on our heads and if we're not there the world is just going to disappear no it's not it's not even Jesus needed that time out even though he knew that the people needed him so you as a human being mere mortal you need it much more Okay, and then um, some people started saying now, you know, those people that will talk up about those things like this one. She's doing these good works. And you see Mam Relindis of Tal, um, Tizang Amazing Love Foundation. You see that one? She's doing like that. I know she's in a cult. Yeah, she probably joined this cult. You know, that's where she gets money from. You know, that kind of thing. You know, that, that, they're going to be those people like that around you whether you like it or not it's not it's not about a it's not a choice you you don't make a choice for those people to be around you they would be around you because they were in Jesus's day so these people are like oh he's casting out devils he's healing they they they've 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 become so wild god has so jesus had so wild them that they didn't know what else to say they just started saying that he's using evil spirits <laughs> meanwhile all along they've had people who had evil spirits in them talking and doing things, divining, diviners and all that the way in their days. They didn't see them as any problem, but Jesus is here now and they see him as a threat. He's, he's like a threat to them because they know that they have a little bit of falseness in whatever they used to say and used to do. So Jesus has the truth and the undiluted truth. They're so scared of him. Sometimes people are just scared of your superpowers. What's your superpowers? Fulfilling purpose, doing what you were called to do. Mam Relindis and her organization, they are called to take care of widows every single year. That's her calling. And when you're fulfilling purpose, some people are just going to be so threatened that they're going to bring news that is not. They're going to bring rumors that is not. But should that bother you? It shouldn't. They were telling Jesus here that he was casting devils out of devils. And then Jesus is like, hey, people. Wait a minute, like a house divided against himself cannot stand. Like, even though in my country they say things like this, that this is the reason why a devil can cast out a devil. So the devils are in ranks, like there's the first grade, second grade and third grade. So <laughs> the third grade is the highest, of course. So there's first grade, second grade, and third grade. So if if you're possessed with a first grade devil, a second grade devil can actually send you out, you know. You you have to respect so you bow. <laughs> say my juju pass your juju like that. That's what they always say, you know. So the first grade can cast out the 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 the, the second grade can cast out the first grade and the third grade can cast out the the second grade so something like that so they always say like that but jesus is saying that they're not even supposed to be able to do that it's not even possible it's not even possible because they they the way the devil works jesus knew exactly how the devil works the devil knows that if you're in his camp you're in his camp so he doesn't need to be fighting position with another devil when you're already in his camp he's looking for the next available christian to deal with you know so if you know this person is a witchcraft whatever Find another person who is not witchcraft and join their team. It's simple. Like, what, what are you guys talking about? You know, like that. So they'll always just make a fool of themselves. When you, when you listen to the rumors, when you listen to the fake things they'll be talking about you because they're threatened by you, you you'll be in awe. You'll be like, are these people even reasoning? Are they even listening to what they're saying? Like, it doesn't make no sense. And yes, this was how Jesus came and he was saying that he was saying about here again, there's still the part about unity. There's still the part about unity. When people are united, they can stand and they can do anything. But when they're divided, they can't. So devils not going to be fighting each other when they already know you're in their camp. Like it doesn't make no sense. It doesn't even make sense. 
Like if I know you're already in my camp, I come and be fighting you again to take position inside of you when there's already one of my smalls inside you. Why? Like we already got you. So we'll go and be looking for people that we need to add to the to the group. See, Jesus, Jesus just knew how to deal with these people. And that's how we should know how to deal with these people as well. If they think that they, there was sometimes someone said, um, this person is Juju past the other one. I'm like, if you think the Juju is more than yours, go and get the bigger one now. Ah, is it not? Is that simple, right? If you think what I have is bigger than yours, you should just go and get it or you join me. Simple. Don't be threatened by me. Actually ask what I have or who I have so we can have it together. There is too much space at the top. Please, let's get there together, okay? Let's stop blackmailing people. It's not helping us. Even though I know there must be people like that for the earth to be balanced. So, let's just get ready. <laughs> and then, um, Jesus was saying here as well that no man is going to get into another man's house and just have to take his things. You have to be a stronger man to be able to deal with the man who is in the house already. You have to be the stronger man. And so you, you the, the, the bigger devil cannot just come and be binding the small devil because there's no need. It doesn't make no sense. It should be someone who has a higher power, like real higher power, like superpower, which is like Jesus. Because it's Jesus that will remove the, the devil and then set the person free. The devil is not going to set you free. The devil, if, if the smaller devil is coming out like they claim, a bigger one will get in. A bigger one will get in. That's why people who go to look for children or success or whatever from the devil always have issues. There's a higher issue. It's like they just keep adding new issues and then you have to go back and forth and back and forth. And you just keep going. You just keep going there. It's sad. So, yeah, that's what Jesus said in his word. And unity is very, very important. So it is great that we get to unite. When we're talking about unity, it doesn't mean that we should just come and sit in a group together, then we're united. No, one mind, one purpose. What is your purpose on earth? Ma'am Relinda is an amazing person. She likes to help people. She likes to support people. And that's why I just click with her. So we kind of have oneness of mind, oneness of thought. That is what unity is about. It's not about us. We're not physically together. It's not the physical togetherness. That's not the unity we're talking about. We're talking about unity in oneness of purpose, oneness of thought, oneness of vision. That's the kind of unity we're talking about. And when we have that kind of unity, we're going to be able to move mountains. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall in your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing, nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here. Only because God made a way. Now I'm standing here. Only because God made a way. Yes, God makes a way. Yep. He moves mountains and causes walls to fall. And if we're united, of course, we're going to cause walls to fall. We're going to be able to move mountains as well. Because Jesus said, we'll do greater than what he did. And he said, well, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, they are there waiting for you. And Jesus says, no, brothers, sisters, parents, and all that, that are the people who have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, the ones that are here connecting to his word. So do you have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? It's a personal thing. It's an easy thing to do. It's ABC. Acknowledging the fact that you're a sinner. Believing that Jesus came and paid the price for you and confessing that he's Lord and Savior and he should come and take hold of your life. Ain't that ABC? Acknowledging, believing and confessing. It's ABC. As simple as that. We need the word of God every day in our lives. And like I said, a chapter a day is our assignment for the season. This is going to take us three years. When I say that, it sounds like forever. It sounds like an eternity. But I know we're going to pull through if Christ tarries to come. 
I always appreciate the fact that you all come here and stay with me from the start to the end. You all share this out. You actually invite people if you can. I really, really appreciate it because the truth is some people in your audience might need this, but I can't get access to them except you share this. And somebody in my audience as well might need something you say and they couldn't have gotten it except you did comment in the comment section. So I'm grateful to all of you who are here present, who participated in one way or the other. And you can also start up a live session. Why not? On your Facebook page. And sometimes you could just run some videos of some people that you think the word is important. You could also get some things here and put it up in your own words, in your own way, and be a blessing to people. I always say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. When in the last days, you want to be part of God's end time army. You want to be someone that is going to do something for God. And it doesn't necessarily have to be big. You might not be the one reading the word like I'm reading, but you can share. You might not be the one talking like I'm talking, but you can write in the comment section. Those are little things that we can do for the kingdom. And because they're not so spotlighty, we don't think we're doing anything. Being here and encouraging me is also something you're doing for the kingdom. You know, sometimes I wake up and I feel like, yeah, I should come on here because I know that someone out there is going to be blessed by whatever I'm going to do or whatever I'm saying here. Welcome, Mom Uchena Arazu. It's been a while. You missed a couple of days. Thank you for showing up today. Happy Sunday to you all. So let's not give up. Let's not relent in any little way that we can make our light shine. Let's go ahead and do it. People are going to blackmail us. People are going to hate us for being nice. People are going to hate us for being good. But I would rather that I'm hated for doing good and being good than I'm hated for really doing something bad. So let's keep it. Keep up the good work. As long as God likes it and you love it and you're enjoying it, just don't give a damn about what other people think or say. That's what is important. God love it you love it then it's good get on it step on it some people are just not going to like you for that but does it really matter no it doesn't if god loves you then the whole world can hate you i don't mind if god loves me and the whole world hates me i am secure i'm sure a loved baby girl so it's been your favorite baby girl princess kitten queen of hearts and laughter and this has been Mark chapter 3. We're now in the new chapter, in a new book. And it's day 31 we're going on. So tomorrow you can read Mark chapter 4. And when we come in the evening to read, I hope that you all are going to be able to comment and say, this is what I learned. This is what I understood. Or this is what the Lord is saying to me this season. Like I said, it must not be something that is on Mark chapter 4. It could be something important that the Lord wants his people to hear or know about. You can also bring it and put it up in the comment section and I'll read it out. Or why not send us an invite to come and be live with us? I'll be delighted. I'm always excited to have a guest on every live broadcast that I get. So don't forget, on all our social media, other social media platforms, you're going to get the edited version where it's just the Bible read out. Just like you sleep through bird sounds, nature sounds, and all that, you can also sleep through the Word of God so that your subconscious will be soaked with the Word of God. And when the challenges come, you'll be able to click, 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 click. Thank you, Mama Melinda's. I don't care what people say or do as long as God is on my side. That is the spirit, baby girl. That is the spirit, right on with it. As long as God says it is good, it is good. I don't care what who else thinks. I don't care whether the person is the highest of the highest. I really don't care. When God says it's good, it's good because he has the final say. Okay, talkie princess got to go right now. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or follow us on all our social media platforms. So each time we upload a new video, 
you get the updates or you know we're live right now, you get a notification. Until tomorrow, it has been your baby girl, Princess Glitter. Mwah! Happy New Year! <laughs> and Happy New Month in advance.